Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to the fourth episode of Economic Space TV. I'm Joel Mason. I'm chief of staff at um, Exa Labs and involved with uh, measures in the Economic Space Agency Network. Um, so welcome to our fourth episode of Economic Space TV. Talk about chapter three. We couldn't make it easy and just go chapter by chapter so that the uh, episode four would be about chapter four. We have to make it a bit hard. So it's uh, episode four, chapter three. Not quite Star Wars, even better. Um, <laughs> so so yeah, so we're going to, uh, if you're listening on YouTube, uh, welcome and you guys welcome. Thanks for coming, being here and we're excited to chat afterwards. And I know that uh, Dick was really interested because he kind of rushed through a new version for the uh, for the book being published at uh, Minor Compositions in May. And he was really interested that maybe we could think about the contrasts or, or how this how this chapter comes off. And uh, so nice job, Nick. I read it. I, I liked it a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Or I'm just finding it on my screen. You've got more than one yeah. screen. Yeah. Yeah. I like to pretend I'm in finance, you know, with thousands of screens around me, but it's actually just two. Just like screens on drones hovering around, asking for your fish. Yeah, right. That's the way he likes it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, look, I just a, as a preamble, I'd like to apologise to everyone for the late submission uh, of, of a revised version. I don't presume many people have read it um, because... Uh, Everyone's got better else to do with their time than 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 compare two drafts of the same thing. Uh, but since I've written it, um, because it is a bit of a there's an editing process going on to get to get the document that everyone else is getting access to to get it ready for publication. And of course, anyone who's ever read any written anything of any length knows you never stop fiddling with things. But I thought that this fiddle made a difference that was worth making. So that's why I put it out for circulation. And if you do have any any observations about how it could be improved uh, in, the next, in the next week or so, uh, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks, John. Yes. Awesome. Yes, now is the time. Yeah. And so, so maybe we can start by just, uh, it would be nice for those who have read or those who haven't, like what's at, what's at stake in this chapter, would you say? And that's... I'm interested in both your perspectives on that. Like, what do you think is um, the thing that this chapter is trying to do? Where is it coming from? What's it trying to? Was it trying to set up as as kind of believable or recognizable? Well, I'd say uh, on that front, it, it it's the first chapter after the critiques. Yeah, so there's a critique of capitalism and and what what's wrong with 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 the current system technologically socially politically etc and and then an engagement with 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 economics and political economy that shifts to hayek and hayek's preoccupation with prices and what we want to extract or what we did extract out of hayek just to take everyone back a, a second is is that the flows of information are, are really critical the way that played itself out was in the socialist calculation debate where the central planners clearly struggling with, with getting uh, up-to-date information, capacities to make coherent and useful decisions. That's irrespective of whether you, uh, you like central planning as a, as a, as a social form. Um, the, the inability to access information gave the market um, a whole advantage that, that Hayek wanted to extol. The thing about Hayek's interpretation, though, was that, that his version of the market, which is our current version of the market, our as in mm -hmm. as in societies, centres on on prices that link to profits, so that that every every price is calculated on the assumption that the supplier to the market is doing it for a profit. Uh, every asset is valued by its capacity to make profit, etc. And of course, we're saying we don't like that. So how do we then start to build, and this is our first start to a positive alternative, how do we start to build a concept of a distributed system, which must include markets because uh, there's no, no serious other distributed system that will scale, but we can talk about that a bit later. Mm -hmm. uh, how, do you have this, how do you have distributed markets that are going to be 
exchanging things, maybe not selling things, but exchanging things, putting a unit value on things, but it's not driven by profit. How do you actually think about that? What's the interaction that's going to occur? What are the categories you need to make it possible? And in particular, how do you make it possible to say, we want to be able to value things or get close to valuing things that are produced for the commons? Because if, if it's going to enter on a ledger, it's going to have a token uh, ascribed to it um, as part of the mm. transaction of its creation. How do you actually give these things the values? So this chapter is really about setting up the base categories. All of the categories in this section get elaborated, teased out, indeed made more complex, but hopefully more coherent in later chapters, but this is just sort of a little encyclopedic uh, entry system of saying we need this category and this category and this category and this category, and they won't be defined the way you are used to them being defined, even though they're familiar categories. So that's that's really what 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 framed this chapter. It's a bridging chapter in into mm -hmm. the into the deeper analysis and setting up some tools for us. Yeah, I, I can continue a little bit. That's 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 I would say it's a little bit more than a, just, just a bridging bridging chapter, uh, but like, like you were saying, it's, yeah, yeah, the, the chapter two, the one before on Hayek, it kind of um, we, there we, what we get there is the okay, so now we understand that also other kinds of information could be could be flowing uh, uh, here, and then in this chapter, uh, this is how I've been thinking about it, is that we we kind of are, just like Dick was saying we. We, we go into more constructive mode. Okay, so what does it mean? What does it mean in this particular chapter, in chapter three, what does it mean to markets? Like, uh, how does it change markets? So kind of for, how can we, how can we, how can we explain how that expands what is normally understood with the market? So that's why it starts to flow really well uh, from the beginning that kind of for that we move from, um, uh, from our individual to an agent, and it, it's a different kind of a entity, agent, uh, 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 agency. Kind of all of these questions start to open up. Like, what are these these uh, uh, these things that are like the the operating in the in the in the, in, the, in this kind of a market? Uh, then it goes to the okay. So, it, what does it mean to to market? And it kind of starts to expand, just like individual was expanding to an agent. Now, market starts to expand first to a space of exchange. Uh, that other things we can start to set these parameters of what kind of information and assets flow there. And then, it's not only maybe exchange, but it's also a place of communication, and that starts to open up now uh, in this chapter. And then right. the, the one, one, one after, which is the performance chapter uh, number four, it's kind of for then how do we expand the notion of production into performance? Like it, it starts to open up. So it really starts already the 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 uh, yeah, the construction of the how yeah, we re nice. reappropriate or, or take reclaim these these concepts and start to define them in a little bit different way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. It's a, it, yeah, it's a, it's a bridge in one way, but it's also already starting the kind of the, the change. You know, if we want to take, if we want to take like the information bearing, information signaling power of money, but without money, you know, um, then then how would we still use a market? And this is interesting. Early on in this chapter, um, you guys say I never heard this said before, actually. So, but in in this kind of clear way, but it's actually that the, it's not a market on commodities in the same way, is it? It's a it's a that's not what's being traded or, or held. That's it's stake. You say it's a it's a market on stake. Is that right? Well, it can be a market for commodities because in any network, stuff's going to be bought and sold. Right. But we but we but insofar as we're saying. We want a different conception of value. And, and these things are all layers that, that can't get introduced too quickly without, 
without mm. moving parts flying everywhere. But we want a different conception of value, a different way of measuring value, a, di a different emotion of value, a, a different culture of value. You know, value, as I sometimes think of it with a capital V, as in not ethical value, but measurement value. Uh, we want to say in particular that if this system that starts with agents taking offers to a market to see who's interested in matching the offer, we want that to include a commons and we want there, as will be become revealed in later chapters, we want the capacity for this commons to expand. Well, commons don't, in, don't engage in buying and selling stuff on markets. Mm. So, so, so that the shift that we've got to get in here, which is not just a pragmatic solution, uh, it, there's a deeper reason for focusing on stake, as you say, Joel, but the pragmatic mm. issue here is that, that if you focus on stake and the market for stake and transactions in stake, then you're focusing on, on, on buying and exposure to the production of value which means that the value itself, the output itself that gets created by this, this performance, this production process, the output that gets created itself doesn't have to be priced. I mean, mm -hmm. we might want to be able to contrive a price and we'll talk about ways of pricing. It doesn't, it doesn't need to be priced. All we need to do in a, in a, in, in a monitoring, a quantitative uh, monitoring and valuation of this economy is to say, were agents in this network prepared to fund the performances that create for the commons? Will they validate, can, can the, the producer, the, the performer validate that what they were claim, they claimed they were going to do for the commons, they actually did, and that, that, it, that, it, that it served the purpose it was said to serve? And if the network says, yes, they did it, yes, it met the needs it was, it was served, then we say, we can give that value. We can't mm. if we have to. We, if we have to say we must put a price, we must value every single output by some, you know, by its costs or by its labour time or something or other. Mm. We can't value things for the commons. But if our sole objective is to say, was the value created, and that's was the output produced? Did the network validate the usefulness of the output? Um, of, you know, the outcomes of the output. If they'll validate that and say yes, it was done then this network can automatically trigger the creation of value. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. in that very specific but important issue of, of the commons, we can, we can start to say we have ways of monitoring and monitoring in this context is not about surveillance, but it's about saying, you know, how do you allocate resources to the various uses in this, in this network, a very economic framing? How do you decide what should go to the commons what specific things the commons wants slash needs, and you have calculative mechanisms to deal with those with those issues. And these are these are also like measures that can be created by the people making offers, the agents making offers themselves, right? The, in terms of like saying, it strikes me that these is just as much about you know making way for this capital V value is to say maybe it needs a different measure, you know, conceived of from the beginning with the with the performance so that it so that it doesn't kind of come in and try to live up to a, a measurement kind of from the ghosts of capitalist past, capitalism's past, but but rather to really be like, no, this is really this measure counts for value, not just for um, isn't this a moral thing to do? You know, this yeah. So 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 this this is sort of jumping ahead in the story, but this is why it's got to be brought in 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 bits oh, sorry. rather than a <laughs> A full, no, it's okay because it's 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 in this chapter, but it can't be a full on blast about this because otherwise it gets diverted into this specific issue in too much detail. But it, it mm. does raise exactly the issue you're talking about, and and to project a little bit, Joel, it's it's about saying, yeah, pe people can make offers, put out prospectuses if you like to use an investment language. People can make offers on whatever they like. The question is, will someone in the network match that offer by saying? I think this is value creation for me at a personal level, a one-to-one, -one, you know, they can do a transaction. But the thing we're just as much interested in are two things. One is, will the rest of the network think that it's value? 
and we have we mm -hmm. can't talk about that in full detail yet because it's all about credit and credit clearing. But the other question is, how do we how do we see a loop of a feedback loop that says I can make any offer to the network I want to, but of course I'm going to make an offer that I think the network will want to receive, and I'm going to put it in the language that the network will recognise, and I'm going to offer proposals about what's valuable in my net, in my in my in my offer in terms of languages and ideas that are already circulating in this network so i can i can be as idiosyncratic as i like but sociability in this network is going to draw me into framing what i'm offering in the language that the network is using mm -hmm. so in a sense there's a loop that goes on here people can do whatever they like it will get evaluated by the network uh, that's sorry, they can offer whatever they like. It might get a bite, it might not. Mm -hmm. But what they're going to find is over time, they start to produce, want to produce things that they find will get valued in the network. Oh, they so start to move good. move towards the networks where, where the things that they are producing will be yeah. valued. So that's why that's why it, it's really kind of what starts to uh, uh, unfold here is that it's, it's really about communication. It's about messaging, like dialogue, finding things out and, right. and it, it's kind of for, I think one of the key innovations or insights uh, that, that we are capable of uh, start opening in this chapter. Yeah. And, and this is like, so, a, I think this is a part that, you know, it, it bears kind of slowing down and going through it a few times because, you know, I mean, I think that this, this book, it was also going to be called like, you know, the, the grammar of economic space agency, you know, like it would talk about protocols for post-capitalist expression which we were getting some different uh, thoughts on the title uh, in our various telegrams today. And, um, yeah. And which were great, which was great. Um, but, you know, now you're talking about a language. And so where can we kind of, I guess, get into that language part in a way that we can take a few small steps to understand? Because at first it doesn't, it makes a lot of sense once you, once you get into the, um, once you get into it, I think pretty quick, but where could we where could we kind of say in the paper? I'm trying to remember where it is in here where it talks about. So let's talk about language and the communication. Yeah, it's it's not maybe the perspective that is the the like a like a more most more more like a at the fore in the mm -hmm. in the paper because this is kind of we come, we're coming from the basically from the economic discourse. So, but it's it's always there, and this chapter starts to kind of uh, remind you there are a couple of. Uh, places, uh, footnotes, kind of a, that, hey, remember, in fact, this is what's opening up here, the, the, mm -hmm. the communication dimension. But maybe it's, for me, it's maybe the, the performance chapter, the, the next one, where, where you start to understand that actually it's about articulating expression, what, what, what you're doing. Uh, that's how it, it starts. Because it's kind of, in a way, you can see it like, like the Hayek thing. Hayek is saying, like, we've got expression over here, and it's profit price. And then and then, then we're trying to say in this chapter, well, we're going to keep the expression and the communication, the information signaling, which is the communication of the market, but we're not going to we're not have the profit price. We're going to, and that's going to make for an even richer communication. Is that right? So, so we're not going to funnel everything down to not just price, but, but price constrained by profit. Or, or defined by profit. So if you go back to the the, the circular way of, of 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 thinking that I was I was posing before, you'd say that a capitalist system, as and certainly as as articulated in that in that simple information version by by Hayek, uh, in a capitalist system, the the openness, the expressiveness doesn't arise because when you first make the offer. When you just say, gee, what, what performance would I like to undertake for this network? The first thing you're going to say is, my, my first check is, is it going to be profitable? Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's not just do people want it, is it needed, but will, will it make money? Will the people who have the money to spend be the ones who want to buy it? And we'd say this immediately shuts down expressiveness. So it's not just where where we're pulling out profit as a, an index and putting in something else. We're opening up saying how we measure is itself unresolved. Mm. How we measure, what we measure are both unresolved. So, so this is an iterative process. 
And it's not just iterative once while the, the network gets going, it is continually iter iterative because people can change their minds about what they think constitutes value. The network can change its collective mind about what it thinks constitutes value. And people in their agents form, you know, performers then have to say, how do I want to adjust what I'm doing? Because the mood, the mind of the network is shifting. And if I'm going to be a player in this network, I've got to shift too. So, mm. so of course, that happens a little bit in capitalism. You know, what's profitable, what was profitable 40 years ago and what's profitable now are different. But, but it's this multi-dimensionality that we're holding open that, that, that Axel is talking yeah. about as the flow of information. It's not just going down a really thin line that's a profit-driven one. It's going down a, you know, a multiple line of, of, of yeah, many, many logics. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's up to it's up to people to to mine that those data to find out their own way of understanding what's going on in the network and what place they may play. Mm -hmm. But just just look, just to add one other little thing about. And it's a general statement about the way this, this chapter is written. Um, it's probably written, because well, it was written, it was prose by me, talked about by mm. us, but, but it's probably written by someone who is an economist who has the conventional categories clear in their head insofar as they're clear categories. <laughs> and it's, it's what, for me, has to be undone and reloaded so people could say agents are ah, agents just a group of people well it sort of is but it sort of isn't because a, a agent is, is, a, is a network related category and the mm -hmm. way in which that agent links to other people in their agent forms is distinctive it's 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 exactly a network thing and and we've got to start using this language i mean i've got to start using mm -hmm. this language uh, but we have to start using this language because we are, in a social sense, we're engineering constrained. Mm -hmm. we've, we've, got, we've got to frame things in a way that, that the engineering, the, the protocol design of the, of the, of the platform can, can articulate with and build on. And that's why terms like agents on the surface, you just say, oh, group of people, markets, oh, place where people come and buy and sell, where it's important to really get the finer meaning of these accurate because they are going yeah. later sections are going to be dependent on what's different here that's yeah. why i think i say at the beginning this isn't just a semantic reworking in our in our own language because we're trying to show that we can say it all say the same thing differently it's what's different here that matters yeah. in this chat exactly Re really well said dick so so exactly like the the like the agent is one of the core words in the grammar, and it's important to understand what that is and what it can do, what kind of rights it can have, and kind of a, what it what is it in the in the network. So that's why this is really the, the first step in the in starting to construct the the grammar. Uh, this chapter. I've got to, yeah, I've got to say it took me a while. I mean, it's maybe because I'm getting a bit old. It took it took me a while to actually say. Now I get it. Now I get what the difference is. This isn't just uh, Jorge, the, the, the engineer, Jorge, the programmer, wants me to use these words. It's uh, now I see why this piece has to be shaped this way because now it'll, it'll plug into the system. Mm. Uh, but anyway, so, so that, that, that's sort of what, why, why this chapter's not actually telling the narrative, even it's not telling the narrative that, that we're talking about between ourselves. It's just more setting up the pieces and, and, and we're starting to project how they combine together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the key, key difference also here is kind of that we, yeah, we define the agent like as, a, as the network native, like a, a operator, what it does, what are its capabilities. It has its private space, it can do, this and that, uh, but also that it's separate from the participants or the people. It's it's a different kind of a construct. It's the network construct. Uh, Although which it is could important, be an individual. Important here. Yeah, yeah. Yes, but it's it's separate from the 
it's it's kind of a, it's it's still it's not the individual, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, individual can be an agent, uh, yeah. but it can yeah. be but can be a co collective too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a treat. So, mm -hmm. so when <laughs> when we take the same issue into markets, I mean, mo most people say, "Oh, markets are about supply and demand, buying and selling," which they are. <laughs> But but we need to reconfigure this as offers and matching because later on by chapters seven or so where, where we're actually looking at the ledger processes and what gets transferred in, 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 a, in a market, including a market where there's no market, you know, like for the commons. So again, that word market has 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 to have be subtly re rethought so that it doesn't immediately gravitate towards price and towards formal exchange between a buyer and a seller. An offer and a match, and the match could come from mm -hmm. from the commons. It doesn't have to be from a buyer, and 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 the capacity of that offer and the matching of the offer to trigger a, a ledger entry. This sort of way of thinking about markets is is also important because because it will subsume the things we think about when you go and buy a coffee or, or you know, someone mm. orders the, you know. A, a... Anyway, I don't mm. need to give instances of mm. people buying and selling stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like it. I, like it. <laughs> I want to see different animals um, so, come in here, you know, poultry, <laughs> pigs. Yeah. It, it'll, it'll, it, it has to cover that, but it has to open up these other possibilities as well, including... Uh, a way of thinking about a market for provision to the commons. Right. And right here, you know, you say this, this kind of says it and it flips around the perspective where it, it looks like a market, but it's really more like this the issuance and matching of offers to a network, the social relations between agents through the network are in the first instance, exchange relations. And in this sense, constitute a market, but they are also communication relations. And in this sense, constitute an economic messaging network. Yes. Yeah. So. Now, maybe even in those couple of sentences, it, it, it's it's not highlighted enough, but I can do it here. Hayek would say, "Yeah, I agree with that." Right. But right. He, mm -hmm. but, but but we we're here opening up, saying, "Hey, the messaging itself is 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 richer, more dynamic." We're we're talking about floods of information, not not yeah. just. This yeah. single metric. So I said that before, but it just just warrants reiterating. Yeah. Other things can be messaged too. That's the yeah. That's, that's the point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Dick, let me ask you. So would this? I was thinking um, when we were like editing and commenting the the final version of this chapter that market is is that. Um, could we define it here, or does it like expand it into a, a different kind of a definition that it's a it's a communication network? That's what the market is. Could we yeah, say something with, like this? Yes, but with one qualifier or one additional, mm -hmm. and, and that is that the communication has to enter on ultimately some dimensions of the communication have to enter a ledger so so mm. so yeah. so from so that, it's a speci that, specific that, kind of communication yes so all it'll all be communication but some of it and here's the thing we don't know which bit of it is 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 going to get pulled out of the information flow to to record uh, an offer a match and a token entry on a ledger with with mm. stuff going in, in 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 both directions. So we've got to say it's it's not just any old communication flow. It's 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 communication flow that is going to be, yeah. As I said, it, it, it's yes. going to lead to an exchange and and a recording of ownership. Yes, exactly. So it, 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 yeah, I would. Okay, so then. If if I would say that yeah it's in fact yes yeah, it's about ex always about exchange but exchange is not possible without it also being a communication network that, that's right that's what... and, but also to put the other edge on it for 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 Hayek all information 
that's coming down here mm. comes into this single point of, of of exchange and the price, and then all the information up there is lost, and then a new a new process starts. Yeah. For, for so us, say, us, sorry. sorry, I'll just finish this tiny point, Joel. No. So, so for us, all this information is coming down. It doesn't have to be reduced to a point. Some of it, some of it will will will, will be converted into an exchange process, a token record, a, a, a good or service flow in the opposite direction. But the other information keeps on flowing for people to be to to mine and and analyze. Uh, as circumstances change and that, that information may have new meanings over time. Sorry, right. Joel. To no, 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 I'm just, I'm just, I'm thinking with you. Yeah. Like that's, and then you have this line here that says that the generic communication relations defined in the protocol are messaging about what is produced, what is collectively accepted as clearing the credit and collective mm. investment intentions. And, and this strikes yeah. me as an yeah. uh, interesting point in that, you know, we're used to hearing about how, you know, market sentiment, you know, People with a whole lot of money are worried about the impact of Elon Musk's actions, you know, that make something go down or something like that. Like things that seem very qualitative and, you know, like tweets or, you know, expressions themselves. And they have these impacts on confidence in companies, confidence in the in partnerships. And it feels like it, this is also being distributed to the agents here, where if we're all messaging about what is produced, we're messaging about what is collectively accepted as clearing the credit, we're all agreeing. Elliot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we're having these collective investment and, and we're all, it's all passing through our kind of communication so that we, we, we really have our hands on, on the modes of confidence in the thing that we're doing is what it yeah. seems like. Um, the, the awful thing is, is, is that the big tech companies, you know, the social media companies, they already know this. Yeah. So, 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 so they're already, already, monitoring these data making them coherent but of course using them for private advantage and, and using them against us individually mm. um but but it's a signal that that the flows of information within an economy within a society they're all there and and mining them gives useful information we just want to do it not information for the source of certain people certain powerful mm. people to make profit but but we should always admire the capacity of 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 complex social information flows to provide the sort of information that a post-capitalist economy would want to know about i mean not every not literally every bit that we that we see gleaned in in capitalist economies but that technical technical capacity and the capacity to reinterpret data is is something that we should all be excited by Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, I have, it makes me think like, so you were talking about how, you know, Hayek wants to boil everything down to a single price, but we're also talking about accepting, accepting a little bit of boiling down, right? And the unit of account, we're not, not going to be infinite units of account, but that's okay because we, we're going to have these tools in our hands. And, um, you know, you're saying like local, local groups, you know, can have sub network and they can have all their own innovative things, whatever they want. It's a lot easier to build consensus there. Um, but then you say, but to scale beyond the local and to be quantifiably recognized by the network at large, there must be the adoption of the larger networks and units of account. Yeah, and 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 the yes. S then units of account is critical. Yeah, because but but and, and if I were to to extend it further, uh, which is not appropriate here, it could be saying and the unit of account itself. Can be in continual change. Mm. We mm. we would accept expect as this network um, matures and as these feedback loops that, that that we were talking about at the beginning get more and more established, it won't be random leaps of of, of, of how we measure, but the idea that the network can itself start to change how it measures seems to me to be really important. It's not a source of instability. It's a, it's a source of adaptability. So in a capitalist economy, for example, you, you would say, wouldn't a capitalist economy love right now a means to adapt its unit of account to include environmental criteria? But it can't. Mm. So it's always got to contrive ways of pricing the environment 
that are compatible with profit-like mechanisms, you know, whether mm. it's valuing a forest by what it's worth as, as log timber or, or, um, or, or, or carbon credits, or we talk about the environment as an externality, but it mm. can't escape these profit measures, but it would love to, mm -hmm. but it can't do it. But whereas, so we're trying to say, this unit of account has to be able to keep evolving as the inputs, the feedback from, from agents in this network, what they say they value, starts right. to express in what, what gets recorded as value. So, so yeah, we've got multiple units of account. I think ultimately, ultimately, there has to be a meta unit of account because different units of account have to be commensurated. Uh, yeah, because yeah. if if we want to make claims to the world about what 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 this this network creates, what value it produces, what surplus it produces, it's got to have a single metric. But this single metric could sit over the top as a as a as a conversion. It doesn't mean everything all the way back down the chain has to be measured in a single unit of account. Yeah, yeah, yeah and it can it can be forced. Also, it's a question always a question of adaptation then. Kind of for that, we it can be suggests different units can account can be suggest. So it's it's about um, yeah, like where where do people want to navigate? What do they want to count? How? So that's the I think that the it's also about the expression and, and communication there, which right. which even the meta meta in the account kind of for opens up. But one thing I wanted to still say about the, the this chapter and the beginning about the market is that. Mm -hmm. I'm also thinking that uh, kind of what what we do here is the oh, and what is why this is important is that we're kind of also like saving the market. Um, um, well, in a way that it is is it is a really good at market market is a really good example of a distributed architecture, and we need to affirm that. And it, it's great. Yeah. Markets are great, uh, uh, and kind of uh, there's a lot of from certain directions there's a, a criticism coming towards the market and i i'd like to like uh that we are like taking a stand and saying that, that in fact no 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 markets are good they're distributed they are they are there there's a lot of like um, uh really interesting things that are going on as long as we can we can adjust or kind of start start setting the parameters of markets what kind of things are moving there how they are measured kind of for uh, uh and, and, and all of that, that it, it opens into this right. uh, space of exchange, our market space, space of, a space of communication about our, like, what is exchange and what is valued. Our, our market's great if we can't control what's, what's there. Are they, are they still great? Uh, well, the, the, <laughs> then, then there is a danger, of course, danger that, uh, that, uh, that they get our uh, like, uh, 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 we uh, yeah we lose we lose the control or we we become we become just the just the particip market participants uh, and not the designers. So so actually sometimes you can be so provocative you know this, this not just <laughs> oh we we we're, we're sneaking markets in here but we're trumpeting them in we're parading them in, in into this network uh, because I, you know I think a lot of people on the left who talk about post capitalism. The, the the opening statement they will make in their claim is you know yeah, markets exactly. are equal. Exactly. And, and and so to to say exactly the opposite is is um bold and and uh and, and I welcome it. Um but it is bold. Uh so so the the thing that people will immediately challenge is well, you know, markets may have information, but we know they become dominated by the rich and mm -hmm. powerful. That's that, mm -hmm. that that if there's no modifying force in this, then then that's going to happen, and and in and and we've got to be able to address that, but, but because we can say, oh, they they they're terrific for info, for information flows, but how do you stop that that that's that other other factor? Because after all, this was the story of liberalism, mm -hmm. you know, the freedom of the market, and we say, where does liberalism end up? It ends up in in well. In a, in a system that we all know and dislike. So in this chapter, I don't think we address that issue, uh, but it is going to play itself out. So I'm just trying to think how, how would we talk about it? So two things I want to raise on that because mm. it is jumping ahead, but, but people watching this may immediately 
say in response to this I love markets well geez what are you talking about so two things what one is market makers are the creators the ultimate market creators. makers are the creators that's <laughs> but but no wealth is being stored in tokens we, I think that's really important to know so people can't go into into a market just with a stash of tokens that's not the role tokens play and we get to this issue late later in this section about about what tokens are but just bearing that in mind the other thing to say and as Joel em emphasized before about the the market we're most interested in is the market for stake well why don't we finish up with just a few people own, owning all the stake in this network and I think without giving the analytics, we'd say there will be a propensity for some stakes to be more successful and the owners of those stakes to be more successful and others to be less successful and the owners of those stakes, therefore, to be less successful. But we, we put in, we embed um, automatically a whole lot of ameliorating forms on that. One is that, that, that reciprocal staking or mutual, mutual staking, sometimes we call it, that has already come up in, in, in sections one and two. It means, well, when one agent is successful, all other agents, either directly or indirectly, share in that success. And if one fails, all share directly and indirectly in that, in that failure. So there's, there's risk diversification. But that, that only modifies the propensity to, okay. um, to, to, to successful stake owners you know, doing really well. So the other thing we, we feed in later in the context of the commons is that there has to be a propensity for success to open up incentives to, to, to resource the commons. Mm -hmm. So that mm. the, 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 the cycles in this thing aren't wealth begets wealth begets wealth, but wealth begets the commons. And that, that if, if those who are successful stakeholders are doing really well, their incentives by means I won't try to explain now are going to be to feed, to service the commons, not to service themselves. Not that we can completely get rid of, of personal interest because, you know, we would all like to talk about people being different, having different motivations, but we can't preclude self-interest in this. We can't right. eliminate it, but we can put in systematic means that aren't simply like taxes and, and, and levies, but we can put in automatic means to say the propensity that the market may have to lead to inequality can be profoundly ameliorated, not eradicated, but profoundly mm -hmm. ameliorated and, and modified, reduced. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's like, a, mm -hmm. I, think, I think about, if I'm, if I'm right, that, you know, I, I, we want the system to be such that, you know, if I want to do something for the commons, I'm magnetized towards this um, economic system because I can get the resources to do a project and that I'm not going to then owe back money on the loan and then have to figure out a way for it to make money such that I can pay back that loan. Rather, I can get that loan called off by performing this thing, which the network has said is valuable, right? That, that this kind of this yeah. market of staked individuals mistake to my performance and say yeah we back this with the kind of collective belief this the same collective belief we would apply to that a dollar is real we want to say this performance is valuable yeah. we can kind of like march that back to the gates of my loan and then you can kind of be marked off on the ledgers and then i'm then i have a, a credit line again to to do some more good stuff for the comments it's like i guess there's an idea that it's not like a a perfect system that's there's going to be no problems in the world anymore, but rather that it's a, it's a magnetic force for those who, who want to do some things for the commons. There's a mechanism there to pull them in and to keep them sufficiently resourced so they can keep on doing it, which is, which is what we see yeah. on, in the biosphere and reproductive labor and artistic expression and, and you know, uh, nonprofit things like uh, um, low-income housing. All of these things are examples of endeavors you can do as a performance that, um, doesn't have a recognition or a number in the current system, but can in the system that we're talking about. Sure, I think yeah. I, I think that's right. And and Joel, you you're right to say that this plays itself out at its best form, its most effective form, through credit. And this chapter doesn't mention credit. Um, and in fact, it takes a while to mention credit because because I I think you know, and we spend a lot of time 
debating this about about where where to bring credit in and and credit is quite a complex thing because it's it's a purely monetary phenomenon if you like you know whereas mm. stake has performance behind it credit has who knows what behind it you know it has network reputation etc uh, and, and a belief in the unit of account and the processes and so we don't actually drop credit into this analysis until further down the line but your signaling is is absolutely right that that this is what that the, the, these possibilities open up and credit is their their most articulate expression yeah i would because, say I, yeah. sorry go on no no i was going to say that yeah except because I, I i really like the especially the like the the narrative how it unfolds uh because the next chapter is the for me it's really the key that's yeah. the play the place where where things need to where they really begin. Now we've kind of set up the stage. That, hey, there are these uh, agents which are different to, to individuals. There are these economic spaces with their own log logics. There are these, these, these markets which are not what you, you, you normally think, 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 think they are, but they are, yeah. they are like the spaces of exchanges and spaces of, of communication. And then nice. the next step is that, all right, so how, how can we start to enter this this information? What kind of uh, different kind of informations can we start to uh, like like uh, enter into these great uh, uh, markets, these uh, spaces of exchange and communication? And then it's the performance or how we expand yeah. the notion of production into something we call performance, uh, which is like basically anything uh, uh, informatic that can be defined and how to do that. Which is which is yeah. also um, also a really interesting question. Like, and, and we need to move with that concretely. Also, also uh, apart from the book, like, how do we, we actually define our performances? Super, super interesting and a place, a real place of creativity. I think. Yeah, actually, I can I can see that's where you're reading the draft at the moment. That's where your head's at, dear. In, <laughs> in the next chapter. <laughs> yes, indeed. Hey, can, Maybe look, we should we should move on because we're coming up to about three quarters of an hour. Yet. Oh, yeah. So should we move on? Should should we move on through the chapter so that we can keep it sort of closer to an hour length? Yeah, yeah, totally. somewhere somewhere closer to an hour. Just good. for thinking of people watching this who might be saying, "Move it along, guys." <laughs> yeah, I, need, I need to go make another thing of popcorn, or I need to pause it. Which is it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look, I've got to be honest with you. I, uh, there's a plumber who's just gone off to get some breakfast, a plumber waiting downstairs to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> but but, I, but I've got 20 minutes or so. Nice, nice. Okay, where should we go? Life, life goes on, yeah? It does indeed. It does indeed. <laughs> yeah, where would you like to go? I've been, I've been discussing this chapter with my partner and also writing it in the chat GPT for the last three days. So that's where my head is at, like, and, and spinning through these different expressions of of where it goes and what it does, and so it's been. And she's a really smart uh, thinker and analyzer, and she's just it's coming really, really hard. I mean, it's great. She's like, she's like, what? So we're not talking about the differences between markets, difference between this and charity, the tax for government. You know, all these things. I think is the right place to be thinking about these things. You know, I think she's asking really good questions. So just to throw that in there for my for my life going on. Right. Oh well, it's good you're still talking, Joel. That <laughs> <laughs> isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. yeah. Even after discussing Exa. Yeah. No. No. She's she's so, super look, excited I, about it. Yeah. Oh, good. I I think the the issue of tokens for me is sort of the companion issue to to markets because mm -hmm. we think of markets and money, but here we've re-specified um, what markets are, and we're saying. And we've got to stop thinking about tokens as money, um, which is not a universal story of, of the world of crypto because some of them are aspiring to be used as money. They're, 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 mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're minted, uh, they sit there as a quantum and they have central bank-like issuance uh, capacities. And, and we're saying in our distributed network, and I think this is the corollary of the way we're defining markets, tokens aren't money so mm -hmm. so so to tokens are coming to existence by individual agents to deal with 
their need to record on a ledger the the offer and the matching of the offer. So they're more like IOUs. They they're more like like mechanisms of ledger entries. And and that if that's not your usual way of thinking about um, exchange, that you're actually minting something in the in the act of affirming a transaction. Mm. That then, then this can be very confusing as, as a way of thinking. And, and in truth, many of us in Exa still sort of find ourselves slipping back into thinking of tokens as stuff you stuff in the wallet that is it, the tokens are themselves valuable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, like they're and very immense, but here yeah. they are like just the asset and liability pairs always. Yeah. 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 So, so wealth will, can be held in tokens because stake will be expressed on a ledger as state tokens, you know, that, that I own or mm. this agent owns agent. Uh, these stakes that they have, have mutually staked in, in, in other agents. So it will record on a ledger, but it's not the, the, the stake itself, sorry, the, 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 the token itself is not the source of value. It's the representation of, of, um, of the stake Right. That, 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 that really matters. Now, that's not that we know that in a capitalist economy, you, you could say, you know, I own shares in a company. Well, what's the underlier? It's not the bit of paper. It's it's the 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 value of the company, supposedly. Or, mm. Mm. but you also we also hold bank accounts, and and what's in bank accounts is just money. Yes. So so so, and that that gives us to to understand, and we live the world in which stashes of money is itself a sort of wealth and there is no money like that in this network mm. oh then I, I, I will, i've been also thinking about the kind of like you know i remember like uh, how perry merling talks about money that all, all well it's only money is only only ious all banking is yeah. is, is, is about that uh, about ious and all, all money is different um all, all issued by different banks it's it's all different and it kind of points to the same. It's it is already a distributed issuance system, but it points to that it's what matters is what's in the background, the kind of the institutional yeah. context. That actually, that's that's actually what it what is what is. Well, and, and, it, and that's why I think it's such a challenge to. I've been thinking a lot about that these couple of weeks. Like, why is it such a challenge sometimes to communicate about uh, kind of exa stuff? And and it's like I don't think it's because of. It's we're not good at communicating. I think it's I think it's because it is this background institutional thing. So it's not in discussion in normal life. <laughs> and so we're like our, our our analogy is kind of being like, all right, imagine that something invisible is in your normal life, and then we made that visible and brought it forward. It's that thing. It's like to most people, they're like, I didn't even know that whole thing existed before. So I don't know what we're comparing it with now. <laughs> yeah. So, but I think it. I think that's why this. This whole book is such a great thing it, and why you were saying Dick, like the specifications matter because it's outlining also its negative opposite you know it's also revealing what's yeah. operating now um and as well as kind of proposing a, a different thing and then saying this different thing is going to affect something that you do see every day you know yeah yeah no that's absolutely right and and so when actually invokes perry merling Mm. which is good because because uh, i think we see ourselves using the same ledger style of analysis as as merlin yeah. um not that i expect everyone watching this will know who perry merling is but but perry merling's saying money is ious but also his analysis has as its as its foundational proposition that there's a hierarchy of money issuance and at the top is the central bank and so yes. the central so, so this money gets created by private banks, but it gets endorsed by the central bank. Mm. We, don't, we don't have a central bank that's going to do the endorsing. So, so, so we have distributed issuance in the way that, that, that private banks in a capitalist economy issue credit. And then other banks say, oh, yeah, that's, you know, Joel, you, you get a line of credit to go and, and buy something and you, uh, you, you 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 buy something and with with money from the line of credit, and the other bank receives and says, "Yeah, we'll take this as money," mm -hmm. even though it was money invented by the other bank that gave it to you as credit. 
Right. And there's this hierarchy that's up saying, yes, we'll back that. We'll declare that as money. Our, our network doesn't have that higher authority to, to declare something as money. So the, the verification processes have to go round in circles. And I don't mean in circles as in incoherent, but it has to constantly be referencing to, to, to the capacity of the network to declare and the capacity of the network to validate and to value and, and yeah. to, to be transparent. They're the mechanisms of, of, of moneyness that we're looking for. And in that sense, tokens are about making transparent and putting on a record, putting on the ledger. Communicating. Documentation. That. Yeah, communicating. Yeah. Thank you. That, uh, communicating what's actually been going on in the, I, in the world of IOUs. And what's yeah. what's the general state of the IOU market? What's the net positions for, for individual agents? What's the overall position for the network, et cetera? So we've got to do it ourselves. Yeah. We, we don't have a central bank. And I think all of us could say, thank God we don't have a central bank because they're making such a mess of it at the moment. Mm -hmm. But yeah, then, of course, exactly. we, we, lots of groups have tried to do it themselves in the past without the corresponding kind of technology. And, and then it's just too much information to handle. And that's part of the proposition here is that is it these abilities of the agent, which we can join in groups or as, or as individuals, they are the, the computational abilities to be able to signal yes. and communicate and remember, right, um, at scale in, in a way. Yes, exactly. We, we can participate in our own information sifting and categorizing. Yes, yes, Joel, exactly. So that, that's why what we need is, is a grammar a shared language that kind of for the problem has been yes it has been kind of for uh, earlier also like thought and even experiment with but it can't scale if we don't if there's no interoperability with others that's why we need this grammar this protocol that we can share and if we share it and we all talk it then there is a there's this 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 premium that emerges from the from the virtue that we are connected that we are interoperable that we are our network it's a network premium and that's kind of for the yeah, uh, what the protocol is for really the, the emergence of the network premium and 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 catching that capturing that uh, in a way that the whole network shares it yeah, yeah there's a good isn't there's a good part about the network premium in here isn't there uh, I, I was going to talk about the, the prices because i thought that was interesting to think about mm. And the name of synthetic price, but I also there's that I'm not sure where the network premium part is. I was just reading it, but uh, if anybody knows, yeah, I can't. I can't think where it is in there. I, I can't think exactly where it is, but it's just as as actually explained it. Yeah, yeah, right, so exactly. On, yeah. Hmm? So on on the, on those prices, look at you know in a hmm. sense that section is is really wanting to say. There are prices in the Hayekian sense, the, the, the mm -hmm. broadly Hayekian sense, uh, not quite the same, but close enough that we're calling a direct price. But everything else, and, and there are tributes, things that are given for, for, for free, but, but really the two, three, and four in that list are all ways of retrospectively contriving a price. If you want to put the number in a box and say, we want to give a price to... To someone who's providing, you know, food to people in the, you know, in the commons for free, or for, sorry, food to homeless people for free, and the networks declared that it is a, a, an act of value creation, and that that means it's it creates value, uh, but it doesn't have a price. We can say, yeah, we we can if we want a data set, we can configure it as a price. We can say the network has validated its costs and say this service is being is being provided with reasonable costs, with reasonable workplace relations, with, with good efficiency. It doesn't have a price because nothing's selling. You want a price? We can we can do what in, in the old socialist economies was called a shadow price. You know, we, we, can, we, we can reverse engineer a price by saying, these are your costs. These are the general rate of, of surplus creation in the network. You want a price? We'll give you a price to put it, to put it in the box. But our principal concern is not to give every commodity a price. I'm just saying we can do it. Mm -hmm. The information, the information flow is there. And that's really what comes out of that. We can still talk about prices, output prices, but 
they're not what we're interested in. We're interested in our agents going to stake the creation of outputs, not mm. can we price outputs? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. indirect price thing, I don't quite get it. Is that is it is that kind of useful to ask an, an example or would you rather push me aside well, under the bricks? There's later, a later on. appendix on that. But, but it, it, it's where we sort of started is, is to say, where, where are we going to find evaluation before, before we got to, to the, the staking issue? So I'm going back quite a few years. Mm. And the notion was that every social contribution, if we, as, an, you know, as a group here for a second, say let's, we, we can have a broad consensus on what a positive social contribution is we could have the notion that eventually it will make something more profitable. Right. You know, that, that if, you, if you give free food to, to homeless people, it will uh, improve health in the economy. It will reduce, gee, I, I don't want to go into, into stereotyping people who are homeless, but, but about, you know, it'll reduce crime. It'll make the, the, the city a more aesthetic place to be. But you can think of a whole lot of indices by, by, by which the world will be a better place, which is why we're going to do it. And eventually that will make someone greater profit. So we could reach all the way up the line and then and then reverse engineer it and say, gee, how much of that profit that we got up here 10, 10 input outputs ago, how much of it here is attributable to, uh, to, to providing uh, food to homeless people? And you could contrive a measure of it, but, but we've got to sort of say, ah, oh, that, that looks feels so slow and cumbersome and so so maybe a, impractical. Maybe a long time to wait too for the retrospective. It's, yeah, it's and, in the, and we fraught with argument, yeah, about yeah. how much of it is due to you, to what you did and how much yeah. of it is due to what I did. And yeah. that sort of stuff. I, I think the indirect price is kind of described well also in the in the appendix of the performance chapter. It kind of okay. explains ah. it. Cool. All right. Uh, yeah. you, you get a sense of it there okay. pretty well. That's good. Yeah. There is an appendix on it. Uh, I was going to say, um, as kind of a, a, a continuing on this, uh, this uh, real life of, of Joel in the last two days, writing into chat GPT, talking to my partner about this, you know, I thought it was funny after I put in a bunch of stuff in there, I was asking like, how would you convince like a, uh, a middle-aged cons conservative woman <laughs> to invest, <laughs> invest in the capitalist system? Mm -hmm. I, was, I was writing all, all different combinations and this, this response was, Interesting because it, it relates to this idea that <laughs> actually the things that that sport people cast as risky right now, you know, feeding homeless people or you know putting money into non non profit yielding uh, kind of ecological activities, um, that they're actually more profitable in the long run and that they actually promote long term stability, which is of course like a, a stalwart uh, proposition of various conservative wings, you know, mm -hmm. long term stability and it's like a, you know. And so that was that's what, what the uh, chat GPTs uh, kind of uh, spat back at me, and I, and I liked it. It's like, oh, well, this is the stable <laughs> choice. You know, this is like the long term. If you want a better place yeah. to make money, yeah. think about it. <laughs> yeah, think about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and and while the um, the social superiority of noblesse oblige and you know charitable deeds. Of, of the the sort of class of person you referred to, Joel. While, while we know, again, I'm stereotyping, but you know, there, there can be the, the feel good sense of I'm doing good things for the world. Saying, yeah, maybe they are. Probably they are. Hopefully they are. But why shouldn't we value it? Why why should we just say this is too sacred uh, uh, an, an act to be given a value because? the people doing it want to feel that they are, you know, such good citizens and it would be vulgar to value what they do. And to sacrifice saying, no. something like that, yeah. Yeah, and, I, you know, I feel virtuous in my sacrifice. It's like, get over it. You know, <laughs> you can do it for nothing if you like, but, 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 but let's monitor it. Let's see whether it's effective. Let's see whether, whether the network should be declaring this is a creation of value, which is not to say you have to get paid for it, but we as a network want to codify it as information. And, and so that we can have this living, ongoing living laboratory using the grammar 
of the economic space protocol to to reason about how to how to measure and how to value things. Like you say, it's not we're not gonna there's gonna be a lot that's gonna be ongoing. It strikes me that we say units of account to mean multiple, but it, uh, at the same time, but you're also saying units in a uh, uh, through through a kind of temporal lens, like always changing, you know, always being updated yeah. the same way software is, you know, and so. So in that sense, that's a good rationale for it being open source. It needs to be kind of updatable yeah. in an ongoing way by all the information that we're um, creating by using the system. Yeah. Well, I know yeah. that we're. I know that I know that we're kind of ten minutes over. And Excelly, I think you might have something. Um, that's right. Yeah, yeah. We gotta, <laughs> gotta go very soon. Very soon. Maybe we have can. You got a plumber too. <laughs> Everyone's got a plumber. As a euphemism for something, but. The, should we should we open it up and see uh, and please see if please folks yes. wanna... I think these later sections are pretty self-explanatory. It's just getting on the record that we want to draw a distinction between distributed and decentralized, and they yeah. they they really are just almost semantic statements. Maybe I'll maybe I'll stop the recording and, uh, and mm -hmm. say see you soon out there in TV land. Don't panic. Bye. Economic space. <laughs> yeah. Don't